What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna cover everything that you need to know about backend engineering. What it is exactly, how hard it is, and whether or not you should do it. I made a very similar video about front-end engineering. If you haven't checked that one out, I'll put the link in the description below. I'd encourage you to go watch it after you watch this video. And before we jump into backend, I just wanna make a quick announcement. I have officially launched, or rather made public, my Instagram account. I used to have one, but it was private. I've removed all of my old pictures. I just posted my first official Instagram picture. Go check it out if you're interested in seeing weird pictures of me. Follow me there, the link will be in the description description and somewhere on the screen, and otherwise, let's jump into the back end. We're going to start by defining what back end engineering is, and to do that, I'm going to do exactly what I did for front end engineering. I'm going to split up back end engineering into four, four broad categories of work that back end engineers do, with the first category being, drum roll, brrr, API design and API development. API design and API development are the canonical example of backend engineering work that people give when they describe backend engineering. And I think that rightfully so, because API design and API development are very important and crucial parts of a backend engineer's work. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on the API development part of API work because that really just comes down to implementation details, writing the business logic of your backend code, and it's really just code like all other code. I'm simplifying it a little bit, but that's less interesting than API design. API design is where things get very tricky and very important because API design is intrinsically very much related to the overall UX or user experience of the product or feature or thing that you're building. The way that you design your API, the types of endpoints that you expose, the types of parameters that your endpoints are gonna take in, the schema of the entities that you're dealing with, what you return to clients through your API, all of these things are gonna have a huge impact on the ultimate functionality of the software that you're building. That's why when I was at Google, we strived to have our UX designers and our product managers work very closely with our backend engineers when they were designing a new API. We really didn't want our backend engineers to be just isolated in a room designing an API just for themselves. No, they had to think about what the end product is, because at the end of the day, that's what you're building the API for, to serve your customers, to build an end product. And so we tried to have our UX designers and our product managers work very closely with them. Similarly, on Algo Expert, by the way, if you're preparing for your coding interviews to get into Google, or for your systems design interviews to get into Google, check out my company, algoexpert.io or systemsexpert.io. Both links are gonna bring you to the same website and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. But I divigate. On Algo Expert, we also work very closely whenever we're designing a new API, and lately we've been designing a lot of new APIs, we really think about what is the product or the feature that we're building, and how can our API best support that feature. Now things get even trickier depending on the type of company that you work at or the type of product that you're building. You see, on Algo Expert, not only are we a very small and fast, nimble team, we can make changes to our APIs very frequently, and we actually do, but we also have the luxury of having only one type of client that consumes our API. Who consumes the Algo Expert API? Well, it's the Algo Expert website, the Algo Expert front end. It's us, the front end engineers working at Algo Expert. We are the consumers of the Algo Expert API. This is not the case for every company or product. As an example, at Google, I worked on Google Cloud Platform, the APIs of Google Cloud Platform products have two end customers. They have the website, the Google Cloud Console, which is what I worked at as a front-end engineer, and here the consumers are gonna be the front-end engineers writing the front-end code that hits the API for Google Cloud Platform. But then there was also a CLI available for all of the products. CLI is a command line interface. This is basically exposing the various Google Cloud Platform product APIs 
to the public such that they can hit the API through a command line interface. And to be honest, here I don't even need to mention the CLI. The point is that the APIs, the Google Cloud Platform product APIs, are public, or the majority of them are public, meaning that customers end users can literally hit it and are meant to hit these APIs if they want to write their own scripts or build their own products around the APIs. What that means is that if you ever want to make changes to your APIs, you have to be very careful about not suddenly breaking a bunch of your customers' code or products that they might have built around the older versions of your API. So you have to make sure that any changes that you make to your API are either backwards compatible, meaning that they don't break your end users who are using the older versions, but that can be really annoying because then you have to support two or multiple different functionalities, or you just never make changes, which means that you have to really make perfect API design decisions right off the bat, or you have to tell your customers, listen, we're going to be deprecating this older version of the API on such and such a date, but that can also be tricky and that depends on legal issues. Did you have agreements with your customers? Did you have SLAs? Are you violating anything? The point is that API design is very tricky. It's got critical ramifications that go all the way down to the end user, and it's a huge part of a backend engineer's work. The second the second category of work that backend engineers perform has to do with databases. Picking the type of database that your product or service is going to use, defining the schemas for the entities that you're going to store in your database, and this is very much related to API design, and actually interacting with the database. Everything related to a database is something that I think a lot of non-backend engineers take for granted, especially front-end engineers, much like backend engineers take state management on the front end for granted. You know, remember backend engineers typically say, oh, it's just a checkbox. It's super Super easy to develop. Not quite. Well, similarly, I think a lot of front engineers, myself included, sometimes think that the database, either they forget about the database altogether, or they think that the database is some kind of magical box that can do whatever you want it to do that lives behind the API, and that's just not true. A database comes with constraints, and oftentimes as a backend engineer, you're going to have to realize these constraints, first of all, when you decide what type of database you're going to want to work with. For instance, are you going to want to go with the relational database for that SQL querying? Are you going to want to go with a non-relational database for more flexibility? Are you okay with the potential limitations that are going to come with that? And then when you get into the implementation details of your API, you're going to really have to think about what types of operations these API endpoints or implementation details have you do with the database. Are they expensive operations? Are they even doable? And then you have to talk to your front engineers to kind of tell them like, hey, we actually can't do this because in the database it's too complicated or it's just infeasible. These are all the types of things that you're going to be working on as a backend engineer, databases. The third type of work that backend engineers perform is dealing with third-party services. Now you might be saying, wait a second, non-backend engineers like front-end engineers also deal with third-party services. On the front end, you deal with external libraries, NPM packages, even frameworks like Angular and React are kind of like third-party services, but not quite. On the back end, you're going to be working with so many completely detached third-party services that you really have to hook up into your app. You're going to have to read all kinds of documentation for these third-party services. A good example here is your database. Odds are you're not going to be managing your own database. You're going to be using a cloud offering, or at least I would highly recommend that you do. So you're going to be using something like Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud Platform. We use Google Cloud Platform for everything on Algo Expert, but the point is, these are external services. This is going to be an external database that you're going to have to figure out how to hook into your backend as a backend engineer. And then there isn't just your database as a third party service. There are all kinds of other third party services like authentication services. On Algo Expert, we use Google, GitHub, and Facebook Auth for authentication. These are third party services that our backend has to work with, and then the front end just consumes what the Algo Expert backend gives it, which comes from these third party services. Then payment providers like Stripe or PayPal. 
These are the two payment providers that we use on Algo Expert. These are completely separate third-party services that our backend has to interact with. Now, granted, again, here, the front end also kind of has to interact with them because there's some UI elements that are provided by PayPal or by Stripe. So the front end also had to interact with third-party services, but not nearly as much as the back end, which is why I think this deserves a full category of back end engineering work. And here, if you're a back end engineer, you're going to see that you're really going to start to appreciate third party services that have good documentation. So for instance, a service like Stripe, which does have amazing documentation, amazing APIs, and just amazing everything. It's just a beautiful, 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 beautiful product. If anybody watching this video works at Stripe, you have a beautiful product. Thank you so much for building this beautiful, 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 beautiful product. But so, yeah, you're going to start to learn as a backend engineer that some products will be amazing to work with and others not so much. Others are going to be much more difficult. And other things that might be difficult is having multiple third party services have to work together in your backend because they might be very related, but they're both third party services or maybe they're all three third party services or all four, however many you have working together. And that's to be another point of difficulty and just another type of work that you're doing as a backend engineer. And finally, the fourth category of work that backend engineers do is infrastructure work. And here, this one is very analogous to UX design for front end engineering in the sense that depending on the company that you work at or the type of company, you may or may not find yourself doing infrastructure work as a backend engineer, just as you may or may not find yourself doing UX design as a front end engineer. If you work at Algo Expert, where we're a very small company and we wear many hats, then yes, as a backend engineer, you will be doing infrastructure work. Antoine, who's our primary backend engineer, does all of the infrastructure work on Algo Expert, or the grand majority of it. And he also happens to be someone with a lot of infrastructure work experience. He was essentially an infrastructure engineer at Uber and at his previous company. And on the front end, we do all of the UX design. But if you work at a big company like Google or like Facebook, you're not going to be doing the UX design as a front end engineer. And you're not going to be doing the infrastructure work or the majority of it as a back end engineer. At Google and Facebook, you've got specific roles for that. Site reliability engineer, SRE at Google or production engineer at Facebook. And these are just separate roles from back end engineer. But it's important to know that depending on the type of company that you work at, you might be doing this or you might be dipping your hands or your fingers in infrastructure work as a backend engineer. You might be working with monitoring services, alerting services to make sure that your APIs are healthy, that all of your services are functioning properly, and so on and so forth. And all of this is kind of tied to infrastructure work. But so these are the four broad categories of work that you're going to do as a backend engineer, API design and development, database related stuff, dealing with third-party services, and potentially infrastructure work. Now, how hard is backend engineer? And should you be a backend engineer? Should you pursue backend engineering specifically? Well, I think it really depends. I think both of those questions are very subjective. I think it's going to depend on your own skills and knowledge and background and interests. I think that for a lot of people, the first thing that they were introduced to ends up being the thing that they like the most or that they think they like the most and that they think is easier just because they've had more experience in it. So I was introduced, I would say, a little bit more to front-end work when I started learning how to code when I went to a coding boot camp. I did do back-end work, but I think I put a bigger emphasis on front-end work and algorithms and data structures because I just really enjoyed that, but that's a separate story. And so that's why I ended up going into front-end and thinking that front-end was a bit easier than back-end. On the flip side, Antoine's worked much more on the back-end. He was an infrastructure engineer, and so his experience is there, and so now naturally he thinks of the front end is scarier or harder. I will say, if you're someone who really doesn't like at all anything related to UX design or styling, even though, like I said in my front end video, you're not necessarily going to be writing CSS as a front end engineer, but if you're someone who absolutely hates all of that, then back end engineering might be better suited for you. Or if you're someone who really likes kind of 
orchestrating the behind the scenes of things, then backend engineering might be something that you really enjoy. If you specifically like working with databases, or if you specifically like working with infrastructure, then backend engineering is certainly going to be something for you. If you enjoy API design, then backend engineering is going to be something for you. And that's that. I realized that I kind of glossed over that final part about how hard backend engineering is and whether or not you should do it. Let me know if you'd like me to make a longer form video just comparing front end engineering versus back end engineering. I'd be happy to do that if you're all interested. Let me know in the comments below. Smash the like button on this video. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Do it now. Do not delay it. Do it now. Follow me on Instagram, like I said at the beginning of the video. Follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter, what else? GitHub, I guess. And that's it. I'll see you all in the next video.